Okay, at this point, I would like to show you how to actually generate outcomes uh, of a discrete random variable where you know the CDF. And again, we are going to use the same um, CDF in the previous example. And I'm going to show uh, this on MATLAB, but um, the, the approach here is, is not really dependent on which language you use. I'm just going to show it on MATLAB. You can apply it to any language of your choice. Uh, but the important thing here is you need a, a function and that is rand, the function rand in MATLAB that produces um, a random number between zero and one. Okay, so we are going to use this predefined function and such functions exist in almost all programming languages and they produce a random number between zero and one. Um, so how we do this, it depends on the jumps on, on the CDF. When you look at the CDF, because it is defined as a probability itself, if you remember, this is per definition, the probability um, that random variable X is less than or equal to K, this value here. And by definition, it's a probability, which means it itself is between zero and one. So whatever random number this function generates and gives to you, you can map it to this interval here because it's already between zero and one. The CDF function itself is between zero and one. So any random number the function rand produces for you, it's going to fall on some of these jumps here. So for instance, it could fall here or it could fall here or here or here, here, or maybe in between these two, okay? The point is any random number you generate using this function is going to fall on either this jump or this jump or this jump here or this one or this jump. So whichever it falls on, is it's going to be that value I need to produce because the, the amount of jumps, as we have just seen, is directly equal to the probabilities of the random variable taking each of these values. So the amount of jump here, two over eight, is exactly the probability that the random variable taking the value one. The jump here, three over eight, is exactly the probability that the random variable takes the value four, and so on. And therefore, as you see, the, the, uh, the wider the jump is, obviously, the more probable your random number between zero and one falls on that jump. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, okay? So whichever jump your random number falls on, you are going to uh, look at that value, whichever it is, well, obviously not this, but this, and uh, 6.5 or seven, um, you should produce that number as an outcome. Okay, so how do we do this in code? Let me show you the MATLAB code to generate random numbers according to this particular CDF. And here I have two um, vectors here. The vector V includes the possible outcome values, the possible values that the random variable can take, one, two, four, 6.5, and seven. And the vector F here is the CDF values at precisely these points. Okay, so that is two over eight, three over eight, six over eight, 6.5 over eight, and eight over eight, which is one, uh, which, which the CDF value reaches at seven. Okay, so recall that I would like to first generate a random number and then check on which jump it corresponds to on the PDF, uh, CDF plot. So that I do with the function rand. I'm going to explain this n and r, etc. in a minute. But you generate a, a random number here, that's r, and I compare it to this vector, the vector holding the CDF values. And this is going to give me, um, let's say, um, the random number is below two over eight, in which case it will be below this value. And this function find here 
is going to find me the position where this condition here holds the first position okay so if my generated random variable random number between zero and one is below two over eight it's going to give me position one so i can use it to address the first position in vector v which holds the values or if the random number is um, greater than two over eight but below three over eight so this condition is not hold does not hold for this value but it holds for this one so it's between two over eight and three over eight then the position will be two in which case the output value the outcome is going to be two and so on if it is between three over eight and six over eight uh, this position is going to be selected so four will be the outcome and so on you see how it works now what i actually did here is to repeat this process n times i do this because if i produce a number of these i can actually plot them uh, to see their distribution okay so i repeat this one million times and i generate one million random values between zero and one and the x vector here is going to hold my outcome so x is a vector holding one million values and each of these values is a one possible outcome selected from this vector v and using this function the histogram function i plot their distribution not their actual values you, if you want you can also plot that but that's not going to be very um, visually uh, informative instead i'm going to plot the distribution and uh, what you do is well if, if you like you can just check this function out in the help of matlab um, so i select the bin width as narrow as possible so that the plot is close to a pmf as close as possible and the normalization option here i select probability so that it produces the pmf actually so this option will give me the pmf as expected you see the pmf value at value one is two over eight the pmf value at two is one over eight the pmf value at four is three over eight and it's one over 16 here three over 16 here as expected okay so you see um generating random uh, variables uh, especially discrete random variables is possible in this way now we can play with this uh, and i actually encourage you to do so if you are familiar with matlab or you can use other languages uh, here for instance you can change this to cdf and actually see the the step function how um uh, you, you 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 would see a function similar to this here or, uh, well, we didn't study this uh, continuous random variables yet, but for instance, you can use the PDF option here to generate um, uh, the PDF of a continuous random variable, or you can just use counts, which is actually the default option. It will just give you how many of them are in, in the data set. So you see here, this is the way to, to generate um, a discrete random variable outcomes when you have the CDF function.